welcome back from Carly at the Hibothecary. Don't tell the kids I'm snuck to the park without them. But uh, it's January 6th now and I was just working on the recipe videos that I said I'd do in the last video. And other than the stuffed salmon with sorrel and the thistle roots with potatoes, I think I've actually got a video for all of them. So we'll call this one a shameless plug or all my other videos. So what I'm going to do is talk about all the other recipes, put the information up for the previous video, pop the link down below, it'll be in the description. And I am going to get on with my latest project, which is making the uh, foragers sack that I made, making that a bit better. Okay, as well. The weather isn't conducive to foraging, and I think I've actually got quite a good store of everything I need for now. So, I'll show you the foragers bag in a second, and then I'll be chatting about all the other videos we did. So it has a sidewards pocket on the flap that turns upwards, two elasticated areas for you to put any cuttings that you take, a velcroed pocket on the main section, so the sideways pocket will then fold over onto that section. The straps are threaded through that top section so that they can just be pulled through and then when closed, they can be tied tight so it can attach to your belt or tied loose at the top so it can go over your shoulder. Three loops on the flap section so that you can attach carabiners. It also has some metal hoops on it so that you could just pop that over a tree branch if you needed. And then on the reverse is one large pocket which is the entire length of the whole bag so you could put any long cuttings or any bags in there that you needed to and then it just folds up neatly like a wrap bottom down, pull your straps, tie it up, attach it to your belt or hang it over your shoulder. Please let me know what you think, any suggestions on size, material, um, any extra pockets, anything like that, please let us know. This is the strap at the back that could attach to your belt if you didn't want to put it over your shoulder or you could just tie those straps around your waist if you weren't wearing a belt. Oops, yeah, I've used a strong upholstery um, material for this one and I've even attached some of these little aluminum tubes that I have. One of them's got matches and some flint in and the other one has some yarrow styptic powder in case I cut myself. The first recipe was my take on a foraged pesto. I don't like pine nuts, so I left them out of mine. We had some ground elder leaves, the baby green ones, some blackberry shoots, uh, some garlic mustard, ribwort and broadleaf plantain. Also had some common hogweed shoots, some nettles and some dandelion greens. With that, I used a grapeseed oil garlic, ginger, lemon, some salt, some pepper, and some of those garlic mustard seeds, and just ground them all together in my mortar and pestle and made a pesto. This I added to some salmon and on a pita bread with olives and tomato, and it was absolutely delicious. So our next recipe was a organ detoxifying green smoothie and for this we had to get a little bit brave and tackle the dreaded bull thistle. I'll only be using the stem in this one so once we've debarbed it we're going to add some cleavers, some curly dock, some dandelion leaf, ribwall plantain, that bull thistle stem, you can use any fruit juice you want but I'm going to be using one apple and some pineapple juice in mine. Pop it all in the food processor, strain and serve. And as you can see, even my baby girl loves this one. So my next recipe is my wild stir fry using dandelion shoots and horsetail instead of noodles and dandelion flour fritters. So we have some hawthorn shoots and some of those cleavers on the ground, some 
garlic mustard, some horse tails, we've also got that dreaded thistle stem, some plantain, rib or plantain, and some dandelion greens, and of course, never forget the nettles. So first of all, we are going to clean up that dandelion stem and debarb it, clean up our horse tails, getting rid of those tops and the sharp bits. We're then going to blanch the horse tails first of all. I'll then pop them in some cold water to cool them off as we don't want them to continue cooking. I'll then do the same with the dandelion flower shoots. Then cut the uh, bull thistle stem into, I suppose, quarter inch pieces and cut all your greens. Give your dandelion flowers a good wash as we are going to batter and fry them. So you want them dried off. And then instead of sticking the stems into the water, I'm just gonna pop them in a drainer on top and steam them till slightly soft. Then mix up your batter and pop in your dandelion flowers. Bring your oil to a boil and pop them on to fry while we get on with our stir fry. So I'm popping in some soy sauce, some brown sugar and some dandelion infused apple cider vinegar. I didn't have any wild carrots, so I use some regular carrots. Into the pan goes our dandelion shoots, our horsetail, and our water chestnut or bull thistle stem. We're then going to add in our greens and fry it up till nice and soft. Then it's time to serve and add our dumplings, and this is one of my favorite dishes. Hope you try it and enjoy it. The final recipe we will be recapping is a favorite in my house and it's a healthy nettle soup. So for this one, we had to knock up a quick loaf. So it's flour, yeast, seasoning, a dash of water and pop aside to rise for a bit. So in our soup, we have stinging nettles, blackberry shoots, garlic mustard, dandelion and ground elder and we'll give them a good wash. Into our pot we have one large potato, one large onion, and some butter. So we're gonna finely chop both of those. You can use olive oil instead, but into our pan with a large knob of butter. We're then going to pop in our onions, and we're just gonna cook them till soft. We don't want them to caramelize. I had some wild garlic in the freezer that I froze in February this year. So I popped that in, gave it a good stir, in with the spuds, then a top up with stock, season to taste, and right at the end is when you wanna add your green leaves as you don't want them to wilt too much, but you do want them to cook enough that the stinging nettles no longer have a sting. I simmered on lowest heat for a while until my loaf was ready in the oven at 180. Took about 35 minutes and then serve and enjoy. Not really a recipe, but we have a little more time. The dandelions that I uprooted from the garden, being winter, the plants are putting a lot more energy into their root system and not flowers. So we got some really huge roots. So we're just gonna give them a clean up. We're gonna chop them finely, and then we're gonna pop them in the oven until they're golden brown. I then pop them through my coffee bean grinder and brew myself up a beautiful cup of coffee alternative, dandelion root coffee. And it doesn't taste quite the same, but it is still very, very tasty. So that's five of my very, very favorite ways to use my foraging finds. And luckily, despite our chilly weather and snow and frost and rain, most of them are available all year round. So, thank you guys for coming back for playtime at the park with the Hypothecary. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe down below if you like the videos. You'll get notifications when we do new ones. Please go through the list and see what we've done. Um, there are a lot of crochet videos videos we've done so far 
and put the links in the description box down below. So you guys have fun. I'm going to go play on the zip slide. See ya. Bye.